Okay, numerical calculations of the motion of a pendulum. So here, this is a pendulum. I drew it right here. So here I have uh, the mass m, and I have two forces acting on it. Gravity is pulling down, mg or gm, and the tension pulling up, t. Now, the key thing with this mass is that it can only move in the circle. So it can only move in the theta direction. So this force keeps it in that circle, but it doesn't accelerate it. The only thing that accelerates it is the component of the gravitational force in the direction of the circle. And, and that's not super important right now. We'll get into this later. I, I really want to set up a numerical calculation. Okay, so I have, I want to find the component of force in that direction, and let's set that equal to mass times acceleration in that direction. So here's what I have. There's a lot, but calm down. It's not bad. Okay, so this is the force in the theta direction. It's negative g times m times sine theta. So if you look up here, this component, let's see, I can draw it right there. This component right there would be mg sine theta. Okay. So that's the force, negative. And that's going to be equal to uh, mass times acceleration, and that's the theta double dot. It's the second derivative of theta with time, which is the angular acceleration. If I multiply it by L, the length of the string, I get the acceleration. So now you see the masses cancel, so I get this. And then I can solve for theta double dot. Oops, I'm missing the L, over L. Okay, for good, that should be over L. I forgot that. Um, okay, now that's my solution for theta double dot, over L. I'm gonna move this over here. I feel bad. I'm gonna put it. This isn't the prettiest, but there. Is that better? Okay. So how once I have this, you can see that theta double dot changes with theta, so it's not an easy problem. But I can use the definition of theta double dot and theta dot. So let me start with theta dot. The derivative of theta with time is over a short time interval, I can write it as the change in theta over the change in time. Or change in theta would be theta at the end, theta 2, minus theta at the beginning, theta 1 divided by delta t. Now I'm going to solve this equation for theta 2. Multiply by delta t, add theta 1, I get this right there, that equation. So theta 2 is the original theta plus theta dot delta t. So if I know the angular velocity over some short time interval, assuming that angular velocity is constant, I can find the new theta, which is important because the changing in theta is going to deal how, tell me how my theta double dot changes. Now I can do the same thing for theta double dot. Theta double dot is the derivative of theta. So I can do the exact same thing and I get theta two dot is theta one dot plus theta double dot delta t. So this also assumes that uh, theta double dot's constant over that time interval, which it's not. But if I have a short time interval, this is pretty close to being true and this is pretty close to being true, so I can do it. Now, I'm gonna just show you this here. This is the actual solution, so we can check it later. If I have a mass on a string swinging back and forth with a small angle, the time it takes to go one oscillation is two times pi times the square root of L over G, so we can check that. Okay, now for my numerical calculation. I'm over here. This is trinket.io. Uh, it's an online Python, um, so you can name the file here uh, Pendulum1, and you can save it if you want. And so this one, you write the code here, and you can see the output over here, so that's pretty nice. Now, in a numerical calculation, we have to start out with numbers. So we need to know the values for everything starting off. So I'm going to put here L equals 1, G equals 9.8. I need the starting theta theta equals 10 degrees, but I need that in radians. Theta dot is the angular velocity, let's say that starts at zero. And then t equals zero, and the time interval dt is 0 0.1. So I have everything I need. Now I'm just going to calculate, if I go back over here, after some short time interval, I can calculate the new theta two dot, the new theta dot, and the new theta, and then once I know that, I can calculate theta double dot. And I can just keep doing this for as long as I want. And I'm gonna do that.
that's why I'm using a computer because I'm doing a whole bunch of calculations. So I'm going to use a loop while t less than 4. I just picked that. In Python, a loop like a for or a while loop, you have to put a colon and then everything below it that's indented is part of that loop. Once you dedent, it's no longer in that loop. So this automatically tabs over for me. The first thing I'm going to do is calculate theta double dot using this equation. This right here. Back over here. So I'm going to say theta double dot. I'm going to call it theta d dot. It's going to be equal to negative g times sine of theta divided by L. What was that right or was it the other way around? I've already forgot. That's silly. G over L. That's right. Yeah, okay. Now, once I have theta double dot, I can calculate theta dot. So theta dot started off at zero. The new one is going to be this, theta double dot, times delta t added to that. So I'm going to say theta dot equals theta dot plus theta double dot times dt. Now, this looks weird. Let me make this bigger. This looks weird because it, you would say, oh, well, theta dot cancels with that theta dot. But wait, this is not an equal sign. It's an equal sign, but it doesn't mean algebraic equal. This means make it equal. This means take theta dot, add theta double dot times dt to it, and make that the new theta dot. So this is theta 2, and that's theta 1. I know it's weird. You'll get used to it. So now I can do the same thing for theta. Theta equals theta plus theta dot times dt. And then I can do the same thing for time. I have to update time too. Otherwise the loop will go on forever. Now just at just to show you, I'm gonna dedent and print t. Or I can even do this. Time equals t in seconds. Oh units. You can't put units in here or they, the computer can't deal with that. Save it, run it. Time equals four. So it did all this stuff, but I never saw it. Okay. And then I printed the final time. Okay, let's get rid of this. And we want to actually, we could print out all the thetas and theta dots and everything, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, I want to make a graph of theta as a function of time. So we can do that with a built-in function, f1 equals g curve. I'm naming this graph called f1. And it's a type of object called g curve that's built into this closed script v Python. So if you didn't, if you just had a normal Python, you'd get an error here. But g curve is built in, so I can do this. Now down here in the loop, I'm going to say f1.plot, and I need to give it the x value and the y value of the graph I want to make. So the x value is going to be t, and the y value is theta. And now let's save it and run it. And you see here, I get an oscillating motion for theta, which is what I would expect. It's a little blocky, okay? But that's because my time interval is too, too big. If I make this time interval 0 0.2, it gets even worse. If I make it smaller, it gets better. That looks nice. Now I can find the time it takes to go all the way here and all the way back, and I get 2. 2, right. Okay, so let's go over here. That's important, actually. And now let's also, at the end, print the period. So print the theoretical period. t equals, and it should be equal to 2 times pi times the square root of L. No, is it g over L? How come I can't remember some things like that? It's L over g. L divided by g. Okay, now let's run it. 2. Same thing. Same thing. They agree. Wait, one more thing, and then I'll let you play with this. What if I change this to a 40 degree angle? Now the period is 2.07, which is different than that. And, and so this is the point. It, the normal period is only true for small angles. With bigger angles, it's not true. 2.7 gets even worse. 
Okay, I missed a lot of stuff and I skipped over stuff, but that was your first introduction to a numerical calculation. We're gonna do this more. You should try to recreate this program, try changing things around. You can't break it. I'll share a link to this program and you're gonna have to start playing with things. Okay, but that's it for now. Stop.